Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Continue on with our series uh, for Ramadan of those things which have to do with our manners or good manners or how to avoid evil manners and bad behavior during the holy month of Ramadan and other than the holy month of Ramadan. And in this sitting I'd like to talk about Mudakhal al-Shaytan il al-Qalb about how the shaitan enters one's heart. Some of the various ways the shaitan works on us to enter into our homes and our hearts. Most importantly, our hearts, because then if they're in our hearts, of course they're in our homes and destroy the rest of our lives as the shaitan is created to do so and cause fitna for Bani Adam as a test. And so, some of the various ways the shaitan or shayateen the devils and their armies and some of the various ways that the shaitan the rajim enters into our heart is through anger and following our desires excessively our vain desires our shahwa and through anger when a person loses their regular state of reality or their regular state of being by becoming excessively angry. They don't know what they say. They possibly might not even know what they have done. Some people get to such a point in their anger, they curse uh, other people, they curse their, their loved ones, and some to such an extent in their anger, we find this in many of the Muslim lands, unfortunately, among some of the youth, is that they curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'udhu billah min dhalika. So they utter statements of kufr. They do those things which cause them to leave the fold of Islam. They curse Allah, they curse the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, maybe they curse the angels. And these are various ways in which anger and the shaitan can enter your heart and get the best of you. And surely the shaitan has gotten the best of those who curse their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and have, have gotten them to utter statements of disbelief and so forth. So we have to be cautious about being angry. It's better to take time out, as they say, breathe a little bit, and if a person is in a position to make wudu, this is the sharia uh, means for dealing with anger, make wudu, and then make rakatain, pray two units of prayer coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him to free your heart from this anger, from this, this state which can alter your state and lead you to kufr or at least an ugly and sinful situation. Also our shahwa, our desires. Our desires is also a way the shaitan comes to us. The shaitan will lead you astray by whispering to you, by trying to entice you and beautiful, beautify for you the various ways of disbelief and the various ways of sinfulness and sinful behavior and vice. The shaitan will beautiful, beautify for you, uh, you know, the opposite sex, where so much so you'll be so inclined that that's all that uh, you, you can think about or all that you can uh, speak about and so forth. And this can lead you astray. It can lead you to eventually act upon that. Because if a person is not afraid to look at the haram, then what's going to prevent them from touching the haram eventually? And and fully uh, following their desires and being led astray by the shaitan and his waswas. Another way in which the shaitan can make our hearts deviate is by hasid is by having envy. And we spoke about envy in our last sitting that by being envious of someone, wanting to remove their ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, wanting them to uh, lose their blessings and for you to gain their blessings, or simply just to, as long as they don't have the good, as some of the people take as their there's uh, 
as a, as a phrase and as a an actual methodology or, or a part of their uh, person. As long as I can't have it, you shouldn't have it. So this is uh, an envious way of uh, a, 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 a kind of thought pattern which exhibits envy. And this is an evil, un-Islamic characteristics. So, so we must strive our best to remove ourselves from those types of uh, evil characteristics. And that's another way the shaitan will come between you and your Muslim brother. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be brothers, in the mu'minun, ikhwa, verily the Muslims or the believers, they're brothers. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has informed us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that we're brothers. And the Prophet sallallahu said in many authentic hadith uh, about the brotherhood, um, the Islamic brotherhood, about being brothers and being kind and merciful to your brothers and sisters in Islam. So this is the way that we can counteract the shaitan and his evil plans and his evil armies. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ also, another way the shaitan can enter upon the heart is by having excessive desires to uh, obtain worldly things or obtain a person's desires. Being haris al al mal, as the Prophet sallallahu said, "Ma dhabani jaiyani ursila fi ghalimin bi afsad laha." من حرص المرء على المال والشرف لدينه. So the Prophet of Allah was telling informed us that the hurts or that that the hurts of a person towards obtaining wealth or obtaining status and honor amongst people is more severe than the than two wolves that are hungry being sent to a sheep that the that that the people that those people who have the inclination and, and strive to obtain worldly and material wealth they strive so more so than those two hungry wolves which strive to catch a sheep and cause destruction and eat that sheep. So this shows us the importance of striving to put everything in moderation and striving for the akhirah, striving for the hereafter, that not letting our desires, not letting our love for wealth and our love for this dunya, to chase this dunya, to lead us astray from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also another way in which the shaitan can enter our heart is through having a full stomach, overeating, being excessive in one's food and so forth. Because this opens up to other desires. It it in, it increases our shahwat, our shahwat. That the more when we have a full stomach, then we're inclined to uh, to want to fulfill all of our other desires. So by being full, this is one way the shaitan can enter upon us, enter upon our hearts, and enter in our hearts, and deceive us and trick us to follow our vain desires in any which way, whether it's, it is halal or haram. So this is what we have to be cautious. And as a side note, and I've noticed this myself, that whenever you eat full, then you some of your other desires are awakened. This seems to be a physi physiological uh, inclination, you know, a part of our being. That when we have a full stomach, then you have the desire, some of your other desires are, in, are heightened. And so we have to be cautious as believers to not be excessive, not filling our stomachs all the time. Leaving a portion for air as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu instructed us to do. Another way in which the shaitan enters upon us is by ajala وَتَرْكَ تَثَبَّتْ فِي الْأُمُورِ that the shaitan enters upon us 
by us being in a hurry to make, being hasty to make decisions, and leaving being uh, firm upon in our affairs, meaning being firm and taking things uh, with a stride in, 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 in due time instead of being quick to make our decisions. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ata'ani min Allahi wal ajalatu min shaitan. The Prophet ﷺ, Allahu Tirmidhi, Hadith Hassan. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he, he ﷺ said that uh, calmness or not being hasty, the lack of hastiness, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that hastiness and being in a hurry to do something is from the shaitan. Also another way in which the shaitan can enter upon us is through bukhul or khawful faqr. That the shaitan can enter upon us when we are being miserly and when we are being uh, fearful of poverty. May Allah forgive us all of our shortcomings for exhibiting this trait and, and protect us from this. And the way we can uh, uh, we can avoid this tr evil trait is by spending for the sake of Allah, especially during this time of Ramadan, to release our wealth, to spend more on our families, to spend more on our, our kin, to spend more on the, on, the, on the poor, and spend more on those people who we don't know, the students of knowledge, those people who are striving to adhere to Kitab wa Sunnah, then the more that we strive to do good with our wealth, this will help to free our hearts from that, that desire to hoard wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it and forgive us for our many sins that we commit during the day and the night. And another which way in which the shaitan enters upon us, and this is especially for the whole ummah, this is something we face, and this is a ta'asab lil madahib wal ahwa wal hikt ala al khusun wal nadr ilayhim bil ayn as dara wal istihqar. So another which way in which the shaitan enters upon the heart, and especially the heart of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is by blind following and by being prejudiced towards our sect or our group or our way or our imams or towards our desires that we being you know hisbiya and partisanship by thinking that we're saved we're better than other muslims no this one is like this and this one is like this especially if it's not based on we're not talking about the uh, making inkar or talking about the people of bid'ah, the people of innovation. That is a given, that is a part of the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we have to command the good and we have to forbid the evil. That if we see a bid'ah, that we have to try to uh, speak out against it, change it with our hands, at least hate it in our hearts, if that's the case as it came in the hadith of, of the hadith of uh, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, Man ra'a min kum munkarin fa li yugayru bi yad fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisanihi fa in lam yastati' fa bi qalbihi wa dhalika alu fa liman ru'ahu muslim. In this hadith that was collected in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you see a munkar, you see an evil, and of course bid'ah is one of the worst sins, it's one of those, uh, one of the major sins, that if you see a person doing a munkar, doing a wicked sin, then Try to change it with your hand. And if you're unable to do so, change it with your tongue by speaking out against it. And if you're unable to do so, change it with your heart. And that's the weakest form of faith. And so, speaking about the people of desires in bid'ah is a part of the religion. However, the shaitan, and that is one of the biggest ways the shaitan comes to us, is that by making us thinking making us think that we are better than our Muslim brothers and sisters. And to think that our madhab or our minhaj, or our way, or our path, our tariqah, our whatever is better.
better than another way. The way of Ahlus Sunnah is the only way for us. That's the only way for us. It's the, 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 the path of the Quran and the path of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the path of the Salaf Sari. We don't have a, cho- a choice in this. And we've m- mentioned this in many of our sittings about this important Asul or Asul Min Asul al That this is a, an important foundation of the religion of Islam that we hold on. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati wa khulafa rashidin al mahdeen Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, It is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If tarqat al Yahud ala ita wa sab'in farqa, wa if tarqat al Nasara ala thinatayn wa sab'in farqa, wa sab'at tarqu hadi umma ala thalat wa sab'in farqa, kulla ala thin nara al wahida, kulla man ya ya Rasulullah, kala man kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi wa sahabi al yawm. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the Jews would break into 70, 70 sects, the Christian 70. Are, are the Jews in the 71, the Christians in the 72, and this one in the 73, all of them in the hellfire except one. And then they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who are upon my sunnah and the way of my companions today, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, radiallahu ta'ala anam ajma'in. So this shows us that this is our path. As, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ هَذِي صُرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمِ فَاعْتَبِيُوا وَلَا تَعْتَبِيُوا سُبُوا That verily this is my straight path. So follow it, and don't follow the way those other paths, meaning those false paths, those other ways, those other ways are not from the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and they're not the Sabil al Jannah, they're not the way they're going to save us. So, this is one way that Shaitan tricks us, and it causes discord and disunity and disharmony between the Muslims. It even causes the Muslims to fight and kill one another. In many countries, you'll see places in Pakistan. How many times have we heard about bombs being put in Masajid, killing this Imam, killing 20 people praying? In Yemen, it happens. In uh, many places in the Muslim world, we see this. This FOLA, this chaos, Afghanistan, Iraq, killing, sectarian violence. This is something, this is evil. And this is how the shaitan enters upon us. So we're ordered, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَتَّسَمُوا بِهَبْنِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا and hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah and do not divide. And the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as is mentioned by the Salaf al is the Qur'an. And the rope of, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as mentioned by the Salaf al is also the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That this is, this is the hablillah that we're supposed to all hold on to. It's the hablillah, is the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the Salaf al radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. So these are some of the th- ways the ways the shaitan can trick us and come between us and cause discord and cause hatred and enmity between us and and deceive us is through sectarianism and through blind following a madhab and through calling us to hate one another uh, based on even if we are on the same deen but hating one another uh, because of this sectarianism because of this blind following because of being fooled and deceived by this hizbi or this his this his this group or that leader, or this sheikh, or this marid, or this imam, or what have you. But we're ordered to follow Kitab al Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al Another way in which the shaitan can come upon us, and I'll end it here, is by suwaban bil muslimin. By having negative or suspicious thoughts about the Muslims. So you should never, you should always have a khair. You're going to see many short comings with your brothers and sisters, many shortcomings in the Muslim lands between the, the individuals and the groups and the leaders and this one and that one. You'll see shortcomings. As the Prophet said, all the children of Adam make mistakes, but the best of those is those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're going to see mistakes, but you shouldn't have a negative opinion and always a negative outlook, nor should you have suspicion towards a Muslim. Suwavan, having suspicion, suspicion towards your brothers, especially your brothers who are on the sunnah. Don't, and your brothers and sisters on the sunnah, don't speak about them. Don't quickly take news when you, when you hear people speaking ill of them. Check and verify that, that news as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujarat, that in ja'akum fasakum, if, if, a, if a fasik comes to you with news, then verify it. Verify that news. Don't just take everything you hear that you read on the internet about this brother. You read on the internet about this sister. 
this this group, this Yahoo group says this, this Google group says this, this group says this, this whatever. Be careful, be cautious of this evil, because this is the way the shaitan will deceive you and will come into your heart and deceive you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bi kitab al kareem, Ya Yuadina Amanu which tani mu kathirum minavan, in the baalvan ifmun. That O oh, you who believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers. O oh, you who believe. Be far away, stay away from uh, uh, suspicion, from a lot of suspicion. For verily, some suspicion is sinful. So being suspicious, being like this, is is, is a bad trait. And Allah has, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the believers to be away from this. Because this khatab, or this uh, verse, was addressed to the believers. Ya yuladina amanu, O you who believe. Stay away from suspicious suspicion. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَظَنْ فَإِنَّ ظَنْ أَخْذُبُ الْحَدِيثِ وَلَا تَجَاسِسُ وَلَا تَحَاسِدُ وَلَا تَبَاغِدُ وَلَا تَدَابُرُ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, in an authentic hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِيَّاكُمْ uh, وَظَنْ He said, and beware suspicion. For verily, suspicion is the worst of speech. It's the worst of, of evil speech. Wala and don't have envy. Wala tajasasu, and don't spy. Wala tubahadu, and don't have hatred between you. And wala tudabru, and don't turn your backs uh, on one another. So cutting one another off, if it is not for the maslaha shari, if it's not based upon the Quran and the Sunnah, based upon religious principles, this is not permissible to hate your Muslim brothers and sisters. But if your Muslim brothers and sisters, they have fallen into bid'ah, and they don't want to leave the bid'ah, and you've advised them, you've advised them with sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said, uh, Adina Nasiha. He said that the, the religion is sincerity, and the religion is uh, advice, sincere advice. So we have to advise one another. But if an individual doesn't want to leave something, and they understand that this is a, a bid'ah, that this goes against the kitab and sunnah, and the, and the understanding of the salaf al-sari, and the minhaj salaf al-sari, if they, under, if they understand this, then yes, then there are other methods, or there are other uh, ways of dealing with him that we have to deal with him. So then there may be some hatred for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not hurting them physically, not speaking about their family, not cursing them, no but rather doing those things which are in accordance with the Sharia, like Hajr, if need be, if there's Maslaha Shari, like, uh, you know, not giving them salams, if there's Maslaha Shari, if you see that this will maybe entice them to come back to the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, yes, but this is not a quick remedy. This is not something we just jump up every time we see someone differing with us, because it's not about us. It's about Kitab Allah wa Sunnah the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi wa methodology of the Salaf al-Sali. That's what it's about. It's not about us. We can't call to ourselves. We can't call to our his. We can't call to our group. We can't call to our sect. We can't call to our imam. We can't call to our four sheikhs. We can't call to this one or that one. We have to call the Kitab wa Sunnah wa Fahim al-Salaf al And I ask Allah the Almighty to protect us and bless us with good and help us to stay away from those things which displease him and help us to stay away from the Hizb al-Shaytan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad